I'm going to open the Henry County Council meeting of April 10th, 2024 to order. We're going to start with a pledge by Betsy and a prayer by somebody on the north side, whoever won the coin flip. Council, you have before you the minutes of our last meeting in March. And if there are no corrections, we'd entertain a motion to accept those minutes from March 13th. Moved by Betsy. Second. Second by Shannon. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Passes 6-0. Next, we have ADC update. Corey and Penny are both here. It looks like uh, Corey's handed out some uh, information that he'll be going over from the RDC and maybe the EDC as well. Corey, it's yours. Good afternoon, Council. Are there any economic development questions or anything you want me to talk about? Ready. Tomorrow? Ready. I'm going to try to avoid talking about ready. I, I have a question. Okay, go. So I know we talked a little bit about the eclipse uh, and local impact. Do you have any sense of what kind of money might have been generated from out of town guests? Um, I don't have a sense right now, but I think in a couple months we can look at two different um, basically tax collections, one being the food and beverage and the other being the innkeeper's tax. Sure. And we can do a comparison and see if there's a see if there's a bump, but those things are a couple months behind. Sure. I think you, your office and everybody else did a great job promoting Henry County and having cool events. Um, I wish we'd had more people, but um, that's all right, over-prepared. Yeah, certainly appreciate the emergency services and the uh, police personnel, and um, I think it's better to be over-prepared than under-prepared. Absolutely. Um, I like the article in the, today's Courier, too. Yeah. Kudos to all the preparation, and I think we were good hosts to those who did come from far away or outside the county. Uh, through our tourism effort, we did some uh, targeted social media um, encouraging people to come back, right? Maybe they came and visited for the eclipse because we were in a good spot. We want them to come back. And so... Uh, hopefully that'll pay dividends as well. Uh, you mentioned Ready, so tomorrow the uh, the Indiana Economic Development Corporation will announce the regional allocations. Um, I would suspect we'll know by noon tomorrow uh, how much our region uh, will receive. And then as I have said um, uh, prior, um, over the coming... Over the coming weeks and months, May, June, July, we'll start talking about projects. Um, and that will be a conversation with the state and the region and certainly the local leadership, which includes uh, y'all uh, in terms of when local match comes into play. Uh, so our region received 15 million in round one and so we certainly aiming for much, much higher than that. However, for every dollar of ready funds, you need a dollar of local funds. So there is a, there is a little bit of a, uh, a matching requirement there. Outside of our commitment in food and beverage, which should be, by the time those decisions are made in the summer, $2 million, are there other local commitments uh, since the match is so high for this endeavor that you're aware of? We would look at tax increment finance. Uh, particularly as it relates to the residential projects would be a, a, a source and then also, you know, potentially uh, philanthropic. Other questions relating to EDC or Eclipse or... So 
I want to switch gears. Um, you receive by email and then also maybe two copies um, at your station um, the annual report. Um, it's called the April 15th DLGF report. Um, I didn't title it, but uh, it is uh, both the commissioners and the council have received the report from the County Redevelopment Commission. And I will point out that we have a member of the County Redevelopment Commission in the audience, Chad Malicote. So uh, it's a five-member board. Uh, three are appointed by the commissioners and two are appointed by uh, the county council. Um, new this year um, was a requirement to present the report to the counties or to the unit that created the commission, its fiscal body. Uh, so we've always submitted it to you uh, but effective January 1st, 2024, they want us to publicly present it. And so that is, that's why I'm here. Uh, I'm going to try to be brief because it really is a bunch of numbers on, on several pages. But I'm going to try to tell a story, an accurate story, but I'm going to try to tell a narrative about the good work uh, that Henry County government, through its redevelopment commission, with the support of elected officials, that's you and that's the commissioners, uh, that have uh, had occurred over, over a number of years. Um, I gave you a yellow sheet, which is just a, a, a really basic overview of what is TIF. Um, that's not part of the report, but I figured just instead of going straight forward into the, into the report, I would give a very, very brief overview Tax increment finance is a tool which captures increases in assessed value from new development to finance projects designed to stimulate economic development activity. TIF exists in some form in 49 states. You look around our state and you can, we can point to major economic development projects uh, where TIF has played a role. That's Honda Greensburg, Toyota Princeton, Subaru, and West Lafayette. Why did I name those three? We're the only state that has three original equipment manufacturers from the Japanese-owned automotive. Very, very, very important in terms of the supplier base. Here locally, the tool has been used to grow the industrial park south of Newcastle on State Road 3 that now hosts over 1,000 employees. The county elected officials created the commission in 1984. Uh, four years prior to that, in 1980, the Economic Development Corporation was created. I was born, by the way, in 1980. Um, my sister was born in 84, but, but I digress. Looking back in the history was, we were created to diversify the economy. Because when that small automotive manufacturer over on I Avenue caught a cold, the rest of us got, you know, the economy around here really, really went down. And so and it's no, it's not a surprise that the elected officials that predate you took advantage of the tools available. So it's a five member board, right, appointed. But that last bullet point, the creation of a TIF district and its plans and whether it issues debt it goes through a five public votes by three different bodies, including a public hearing. And so it's very, very, very hands-on um, with engagement opportunities for the public and certainly for elected officials. Um, I've listed out some projects over the years that were made possible in part through TIF. I'll leave that um, to your reading. On the back is a graphic. I stole this from Baker Tilly. It's a, it's a really good graphic on how tax increment finance works. I'll leave it for your review. Now to the report. Essentially, we are providing revenues and expenses and fund balances for each of our tax increment areas. It's important to note that um, a few years ago, we consolidated 
uh, the County Redevelopment Commission. Um, and that was approved in one of those, uh, that five-step process, right? So we still track and account by individual allocation areas, but by a vote of the Redevelopment Commission, we can use funds in one allocation area over here in a different allocation area if it serves uh, the purpose and goal of the commission. We have a lot of accounts. And the reason why we have a lot of accounts is because we have a lot of bond issues. 2020, in addition to the public health issues in 2020, we issued seven bonds. We were busy in our pajamas on Zoom in 2020. We refinanced four existing bonds, and in public finance, it's a refunding. Refunding equals refinance and we issued three new bonds. Very, very proud to say that we did that with the support of the elected officials, but it did not require any other source of repayment. So these bonds are solely repaid from tax increment finance. Um, and the commission has been around for a long time. They, they pride themselves on that. We're not sure, we weren't sure at the time you know, if you're going back to 2020, we weren't sure that that was going to be possible. Um, but it was, and we did it. Um, and you also got a very favorable interest rate as far as on those bonds back you know, in 2020 versus last year, say. Yeah, a favorable interest rate, but I would say that we could secure a lower interest rate if there was an additional pledge. But the commission decided not to ask for the additional pledge. Um, so I'm on page two now. Um, you see one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, and four were all refunding or refinancing. Five, six, and seven were what I'll call new bonds. So the three new bonds went for the following three most recent projects. One was to uh, construct a shell building two was to acquire land, and three was to uh, build a road. Shell building done, road complete, land acquisition in process. Um, on page three, you can see information on the Spiceland Economic Development Area, the I-70 State Road 3 Economic Development Area, so on and so forth. If you go to page four, Roman numeral five, the County Road 400 South allocation area. There's one primary taxpayer in that area, and that is Boar's Head. So in 2014, the county offered a TIF incentive. The county basically issued debt, and you can see that on uh, page five under D. There's two obligations there. The first obligation was the bonds issued in 2014. I want to take this opportunity, if you go onto the interwebs, yes, I said interwebs, if you go onto the interwebs and you go to the Department of Local Government Finance or you go to Gateway, Indiana Gateway, and you pull up the indebtedness of any unit of local government, but because I'm in front of you, I'm going to talk about the indebtedness of Henry County government. This debt is going to show up there, and it's going to say the county borrowed $12 million. The county was a conduit for $12 million. The only pledge for this debt is that taxpayer's property taxes. If they don't pay their property taxes, just like you and I, then the debt service is not paid, the incentive is not paid, and, and there's no other recourse. Uh, so it's a self-funding incentive. They're getting the benefit uh, of their investment. Was that my timer? Um, that, was a, that was a dumb question for me to ask. Uh, <laughs> guilty as charged, me. Uh, number two is the bonds issued um, most recently, and I just found a typo. 
Name of Obligation, Economic Development, Revenue Bond, Series 2022. Um, that was on the Boar's Head expansion. Same concept. Same concept. Um, on the back page, you see the Redevelopment Commission members. And then C is a compilation of expenditures. And I want to point out a few things. Because by themselves, you go, wow, those are, you spent $661,000 in professional services. Wow. 324000 of that is the County Redevelopment Commission via an interlocal agreement with the town of Knightstown to support the engineering and design of the 109 infrastructure. Um, about 175000 of that is the final payment uh, to Boar's Head in the original 2014 incentive agreement. They requested to be reimbursed their professional fees if the funds existed. So we made the final payment on that in early 2014. Um, much of that is engineering on a variety of projects. Um, you can see capital outlays, the land purchase. Um, the Redevelopment Commission purchased about 92 acres on the southwest corner of County Road 400 South and State Road 3. Southwest corner, I practice this because I'm directionally challenged. Southwest corner of County Road 400 South and State Road 3. Uh, we're currently engaged with an engineering firm to do an analysis on that um, in terms of what is its highest and best use for the long-term growth opportunities of the county. We have to, ha if we want to continue to be competitive in offering our local companies and new companies a location to do business in our community, we have to have available product. I'm gonna say that one more time. If we want to be competitive in offering local companies and new companies a place to do business, make their widget, hire people and invest, we have to have product. Product is the land. Yes, I know there are thousands and thousands of acres of land in Henry County. But an empty farm field does not make a site. It has to be property zoned. You have to make sure that there's no wetlands on it. You have to make sure that the soil compaction's right. You have to make sure that you have access to adequate water, sewer, gas, broadband, electric. Our competitors are doing it. Our friends are doing it. I know that my really good friend and really talented economic development official in Wayne County has 500 acres. They just bought 300 to get to that 500. And so when members of the public ask really good questions, why didn't we get X? And X is a company, right? Well, in some cases, we didn't have a large enough piece of property to offer them or <laughs> sell to them. I assume diamonds. Down yes. in Rushville is an example. Yeah. So that's a long way around the barn to kind of explain. If you just look at this piece of paper and you go, they spent almost $1.4 million on land, that's why. That's why. Is that called the Dupinger? Is that the? Yes, we call it the Dupinger. Southwest? Yeah. Three and 400. Um, we're still doing the, the analysis and uh, to figure out what the best path forward. And so you'll hear more uh, as we complete that. The last item on the report, uh, the Newcastle Career Center received 29,000 um, for the purchase of equipment for training students and, and adults. Uh, statute allows us after we amend our plan, which goes back to those five steps earlier, that we can support workforce development. We've been doing that for a number of years. So if you, if you go back to your yellow sheet, 
the second to the last bullet point, 180,000 of new equipment for the Newcastle Area Career Center. That's over a number of years. It's $30,000 a year. And that touches every single school corporation in our county and ask, actually touches some corporations outside. Happy to answer questions, uh, but it, if the minutes could reflect that I spent way too much time presenting this to you, I would be grateful for that. Time, time well spent, though. Uh, very educational. And you can't blame me. You blame whoever passed the law, right? It said it would be publicly presented. I publicly presented it. We, we blame legislators quite often for a lot <laughs> but, of our... In all seriousness, I am happy to answer questions or down the line if you ever have any questions. Uh, one of the reasons that attracted me to apply for this job about a decade ago was the alignment between the Economic Development Corporation and the Redevelopment Commission. You mentioned the Career Center. Now, well, there's a person hired, it seems like, and I don't remember his name. I've heard him speak three times now. He spoke at, I think, uh, was he the one that spoke? Anyway, he's out at Sunnyside now. I think is where he's stationed. The young man Patrick from Kane? Shenandoah. Yeah. The coach from Shenandoah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's unrelated to redevelopment. It's not related to any of this. No, but okay. he is the career, the career coach liaison which is a partnership between the Economic Development Corporation and the East Central Indiana Educational Service Center, which recently located the Sunnyside. And that's a boon, too, because I know that service center goes all the way up to Marion, Grant County. When yeah. they were located in Connersville, they were so off the edge of that district, it was unbelievable. Geographically. Yeah. Any other questions? How much land do we have right now, acreage-wise? Um, Roughly. Yeah, hang on. The largest, so, so not counting Dubinger, right? 92 acres, because it's not quite ready yet. Um, the largest we can assemble is 40 acres. How much would be beneficial to have to assemble? Um, in one or is there I, I know there's no exact uh you know mechanism or anything like that but is it good to have several different it is sizes of uh, just a, a pot to pull from yes it is what, I, what would the perfect pot to pull from look like to be able to assemble 150 acres approximately is that about what diamond was yeah because they looked at us and we didn't have the acreage. Well, I don't know that they looked at us. Okay. Sometimes we're looked at and we don't know. Okay. Um, Blue Buffalo over in Wayne County that is under expansion, we were on the short list. Um, and the consultant told us so. And we just flat out ran out of land. And the other issue was rail. Right there, right by the Norfolk Southern, right there. Other questions? When, we're, when we purchase land, or when the commission does, um, is it all just fair market value, or are there any incentives from the, from the sellers at all? Do they offer a little bit better than, you know, the outrageous fair market values that stuff's going for these days, or? No. no. Okay. I'm just um, curious. I didn't anticipate that being the case, but no. So the redevelopment commission, uh, we have them, uh, we have the land appraised uh, by two independent appraisals um, at commission's cost, and that provides a starting point. The average of those two provides a starting point, but that usually does not get, that usually doesn't get it done. Um, so we we try to be as uh, reasonable as possible, but also uh, make the land acquisition. Uh, the Redevelopment Commission does not have the power of em eminent domain, and rightly so. Um, so we, we try to make the balance between the mission, resources on hand, and reasonable, and, and uh, we, there's quite the debate amongst the commission members on, 
on, on that very question. You say we have two appointees to the RDC. How, how are our two appointees doing on the RDC? Are they doing, doing very well. As an educator, would you give them a, a decent grade? I would, give them, I would give all members of the Redevelopment Commission an A. Very good. That's good um, to hear. Uh, for selfish reasons, unless that member doesn't want to serve, I appreciate the continued reappointment because there is such a learning curve. Um, Understood. I'm glad there wasn't one. We got, got on the, the council the first time. And I will say that the pay is tremendous. It's zero. I, I saw the word volunteer it's zero. In, in your handout, so yeah. I, yeah, don't go spend it in one place. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Corey, sorry. One, how, how often, if ever, do you feel like you're in, in a race to the bottom with companies coming in and trying to just, you know, you're in competition with another county or something. Is it ever that bad? No, um, I actually, because we, so I'll make an incentive recommendation. I'll make an incentive recommendation to the appropriate body. Often cases, often cases that starts with the redevelopment commission, but sometimes it comes here, right? Depending on what is needed. And I believe that recommendation is a win, win, win. Why three wins? Win for the government, win for the company, and win for the community. Um, there are some deals that you never see because I don't choose to pursue them. Because the wages or the number of jobs or type of industry or uh, capital investment just doesn't make sense. Um, we want to have as high quality positions available in our community that make sense for our community and, and then incentivize appropriately. Any questions from the north half? No? Thank you. I, whoever is the uh, president of the council next year, they serve on the executive committee. I know Susan knows that. And Corey gives us a lot of detailed information at those that he wouldn't have time to even in the next hour and a half to give here. But whoever serves on that, you will be educated again. Okay, next, and thanks again, Corey. Uh, next, we have the additional appropriation that we spoke about uh, last month. Uh, notice the taxpayers went out. This is... Uh, what we held back on because of the uh, typo in the legislation last year that was corrected uh, this year. It was corrected in House Bill 1121 that actually 20% uh, minimum. I, I think we are actually over the 20%, but I safely can say 20% go to uh, regular operations at the jail. And what was advertised was, uh, and we discussed again in, in uh, March, uh, inmate medical, 500,000, uniforms, 44,500, janitorial supplies, 47,900, inmate supplies, 15,000, jail maintenance, 50,000, jail utilities, uh, 50,000. This is roughly uh, 300,000 over what we pulled out because of the 20% uh, versus 0.2% typo in that legislation last year in 2023. Um, our liaisons, Susan Shannon, I know you two seem to deal mostly with the issues relating to uh, the jail and the sheriff's department. I'm on the, the lit committee, but you two specifically on this particular lit, I'm going to turn it over to you to uh, share any other information that's germane. Um. I know for inmate medical, we budgeted just over 300,000 and that was very much under budgeted. It looks like the total amount will be probably between 600 and 800,000. Um, and it was interesting when we looked at the contract amount from the company that we actually contract with, they had estimated expenses for the year would be closer to 800,000. So, 
Um, I think it is reflective of increasing medical costs. So um, we have asked, Shannon asked um, Stacy to request, is this, what's, what's the name of the company? QCC? QCC. QCC to request from QCC what they would cost to do everything because right now they do a piece of it and then we bring other service, you know, we bring in dental services, x-ray services, just to try to get, not that we would necessarily do that, but it would give a total cost picture of what it might, what it might cost. So do you have a year total so far? I didn't, I should have asked you earlier, it's okay. I think if we continued on the trajectory, it would, it would be over the 600,000 that we would put in today. Yeah, I don't have the number, but when we sat down and discussed it, we projected it out and it was like $780,000. If we continued on the same path that we were on, I will say that that QCC contract went into place after budget season last year the previous uh, company had dropped us or, or wanted to renegotiate for multitude of reasons and QCC was selected as the replacement. The, the actual medical costs are outrageous compared to previous, um, both in quantity and in dollar amount. Um, which led us to question, why do we have all these additional quantities of medical expenses? Well, there are way more inmates out there than, than we had really planned on. I think we were limited to 110 in the old jail, and we're over twice that currently. So the, I was completely astounded by the amount of dollars that we are being required to spend to take care of medical needs of inmates. So some of that led us to discussions about why do we have so many inmates and uh, that, that's a whole nother discussion. But as long as we continue to house the men, as many inmates as we have, the medical issues that they have are our responsibility and we're gonna have to take care of them, which is absolutely scary to the budget. We talked when we built the new jail about how maintenance would be more in control because the building would be more airtight, we wouldn't have as many repairs. I don't, we didn't talk, we built the new jail because we had to build it, but we didn't talk in great detail about the additional expense of housing twice as many people. And this is very much a reflection of, for every inmate that we house there, there's an average expense to feed, clothe, and provide medical care. And, for that individual. And the current jail is probably four times the square footage of the old jail because you've got all those offices, you've got JCAP, you've got a much larger kitchen, storage, et cetera, et cetera. You've got training room. It's just maybe four times larger, but it's 20 times better. I know the previous contract for um, medical was going to get much more expensive one of the reasons why we moved to this company and now there are just things that are not included which may or may not have been included before but there's the contract and then there's everything else we pay for on top of just med you know hospital bills aren't included in that contract so and you're right medical everywhere has, has gone up anytime you go to a doctor or a specialist or you're hospitalized uh, you will get sticker shock once uh, once you get the bill that's that's a given Anything else you'd like to share or questions from the rest of the council? So I just wanted to say again that Shannon and I are recommending an additional 500,000 for inmate medical. And we're not saying that that will be the last additional, but it's all that either of us were willing to suggest right now. So it's a stopgap and a possible modification in the fall, it sounds like maybe on the horizon. Okay, this was properly advertised by, by Debbie to the taxpayers. I don't see anyone that's just a community member here wanting to question it. I don't think we've gotten any communications from anybody wishing to uh, share on this topic. Um, so um, 
If we're going to vote on them all together, we wanted to mention something about the jail utilities amount. But if you were going to vote on each, I was going to ask separately. Joel which would be preferred. Oh, but sorry. go ahead and go ahead and do the uh, jail utilities because we may decide to do all these together since we've mentioned each one. We we increased the jail utilities in the budget last year, anticipating what these were going to cost, and not really having a good basis of information for what that's going to look like. That said, we took $50,000 out of the jail utilities and put it in inmate medical earlier this year. If we were going to wait on anything, I would suggest waiting on the 50000 for jail utilities. Do you have any sense, Debbie, of how close we are? I did, again, hitting you on the, on the fly with it. But, yeah, that, if we were going to wait on anything, we could wait to do the additional appropriation on jail utilities. Uh, to see how close we are later in the year. To get a little bit more history, what would be your recommendation in that? That would take it down to, what, 757? 400? Yeah, 650, $657,400 $657, instead of the 7074. Do you have a recommendation? That's my recommendation. And matter of fact, if, if we're ready, I will move to approve the additional appropriations, all of them, less the jail utilities, $50,000. And I second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to, as uh, Susan and I have both gone through and, and told you the amounts uh, verbally. Uh, we uh, The motion was to for the time being, to delete the 50,000, which would make what we're voting on $657,400. Any discussion? If not, uh, all in favor of that revised amount, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. I'd uh, like to make a comment, if I could, Ken, and I was not at the work session. I was out of town on business. And I don't know if it was mentioned, I watched it, but I can't recall. That number is not sustainable from the jail lit every year. We're going to have to figure out how we're going to take care of things. We cannot spend that amount on inmate medical every year. There's not enough money there. So this works to get us out of the hole we're in with inmate medical right now. But we've got some serious budgeting to figure out before 2025. And I think that definitely needs to be a topic. Uh, it looks like our work session in April is going to be pretty much filled with jail pod and possibly Baker Tilly in their five-year report. We haven't pinned that down yet, but May and June before we head into the budget hearings, we definitely need to make that a topic uh, to note that this is not sustainable. There's several things that are likely not sustainable. Do you happen to know, we, we alluded to, we at least have 20% for operation, what this uh, 657 proportion is to the amount that we actually get in our jail? Uh, our jail, jail lit receipts are roughly $2.167 million, is that? I think it I'm is. I'm looking at the, the, the uh, budget number. The jail bond payment is 1.7. So we're bringing in a little over four hundred thousand dollars above. That's, and that's what we took out. We took out four hundred and eight, I think. Well, so. and because we had brought those dollars in over a few years and hadn't spent right. any of it, we had dollars sitting there that we couldn't spend because we had the twenty percent cap. The legislation that supposedly fixed that, that then had to be fixed again for this year, finally fixed, um, allowed us to spend our remaining funds out of that jail lit, which is why we can do this. If we, like with 400,000 coming in, we can't budget that amount every year. It's no, and it looks like the, the main obstacle is inmate medical, that it's going to have to be looked at somehow. Absolutely, and that's gonna to have to be part of the jail pod discussion because just if we can afford to build a pod and maybe we can afford to staff the pod. Can we afford to take care of the medical expenses for all those inmates that we would have in another pod? Not, not at I, this level. I don't know. <laughs> given current right. amounts, revenues. And I know the 2.1 doesn't include the supplemental, but we cannot count on that year after year. So 
I think the figures you gave are accurate now. The vote was taken and it was seven in favor of Debbie, seven zero in favor of the 657-4 amount. Next we have uh, to discuss EMS, and I know Mandy's probably tired of being here, but, oh, well, it skipped on my, okay. Um, there's, uh, okay, what we have, and I, I did listen to the commissioner's meeting earlier today. Um, the county council approves the expenditures of revenue received from the settlement of claims against the opioid manufacturers and distributors set forth in exhibit A and previously approved by the commissioners. And um, some of these we've already dealt with. Are we starting, Joel, with four, five, and six? Five and six. Five and six. Okay, four we dealt with on the JCAP last month. So five, the sum of up to $30,000 to assist Henry County light keepers in the development of a resource center to provide assistance to the community, including those suffering from or at risk of suffering from substance use disorder or SUDS. And number six, the sum of uh, $40,000 to assist Henry County Women's Recovery Center Incorporated in the renovation of a property to be used for a residential treatment and recovery center for women suffering from SUDS, substance use disorder. And I think we alluded to this last month, maybe in our work session. Um, and that's the house that's on A Avenue? That was, that? It's four square property on A Avenue. Okay, I, okay, that's additional information. Those are the two areas. You do have a copy of that. I'd entertain. It's been approved by the commissioner. To entertain a, a motion for items five and six. So moved. Moved by Shannon. Second, and I just want to add that I think uh, us moving in this direction for the county um, is desperately needed and really welcome. Okay, yeah. uh, moved by Shannon, second by Betsy, correct? Any discussion? If not, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Passes 7-0. Now, Mandy and Brian are both here. The reason you've been asked, uh, you spoke, both of you spoke at our work session in January, gave us some information. Uh, you spoke at the work session that we had last month and gave us information. We're just wanting to know if there's any changes. We talked about billing and if that's been uh, corrected and if the numbers you gave us in January and March, because we're having to probably have a very serious discussion coming up in a few weeks about an EMS lit, which is going to affect taxes of our community. So we wanna make sure we have the best numbers and most current numbers available. Has anything changed since the last discussions or share session? I don't, yeah, what I don't, other information are you I'm not, yeah, that's what, what are we you? need to know amounts because if we were to approve, a, a, let's say a 0. 0.5, that will bring in about $550,000, but we're looking at that money's going to the 300,000 that we've committed to Newcastle as well as what the needs of Henry County. So has anything changed uh, in that regard or? Uh, commissioners and a mayor conversation for yearly agreement. Are, are you asking about the We're asking about financial needs because if we raise the taxes, we need to know specifically that we're doing it for the right reason, for the right cause and the right amounts. Right. Well, I, I, there has not been any conversation yet with between the commissioners and the mayor. I didn't know that we were to have a conversation. I'll be more than happy to call the mayor next week and well, set a meeting. We've been budgeting 300000 to Newcastle. We need sure. to know if we need to continue that because it well, comes out of our I'm general fund. I'm more than happy to call the mayor and set up a meeting. I didn't know that anybody was needing us to have a conversation with the mayor. Oh, I didn't either. I just need to know before we pass the lips, is that 300000 going to be ongoing? 
because we're the. Uh, there'll be some money, yes, I'm sure. Why we just don't know what the dollar figure well, is. Well, in the I'm next sure two weeks, be. we'd like to know before our April meeting, if we can, if that's going to be the request over the next few years to contain, because it's been that the last two years, and we've had to come up with it. And also, Mandy, I know when you spoke, you mentioned that their staffing, uh, uh, equipment, billing. We yeah, need to know. My numbers haven't changed as far as what I presented to you when we first talked about it. It would still be about the same. What I expected then, I haven't had any real increases in anything. Um, other than right now, I'm pending advanced applications because I'm not. I can't take that leap right now with not having billing coming in consistently. But it, refresh my memory. What switching over or adding uh, ALS mm -hmm. additional costs in the nearest fifty thousand dollars? What's that going to cost you? So advanced is the in between medic and EMT. It's in the middle. It's kind of a supplemental. There's we can do more and charge more. Yes. Um, so we are we have a waiver to go back to that midpoint right now because I couldn't provide that except billing fell out. So we now we're just waiting. So I have it. I could. Um, interview and hire advanced EMTs now, plus the three I have in school, the three I'll send after they get out of school that I already have ready to go. But I can't make that jump right now. I'm not comfortable with it. It's not, it doesn't really increase the pay as much, but it would increase my supply bill to have both squads and two trucks with those supplies on there. Okay, when you spoke to us a few weeks ago, the issue then was billing. How's that coming along, the new billing company? We're completely transferred. We are billing okay. to the new company. Now we just wait. Okay, because you were talking about that there's going to be a short-term shortfall. Yep. And you... Yeah. We don't have hardly any money coming in right now. So... And it's just a waiting game to see how fast. And they've done a lot. They have built a lot. Now it's on Medicare and Medicaid, Anthem. Which may take months... Some come back really quick, some want more answers, supplemental information, it just depends. But there's probably 250 runs billed at this point. Mandy, you were trying to keep that $100,000 limit. Have you eaten into that $100,000? Can you give us an I idea? Will, I far? will as once payroll comes out. Okay. So you you hit it and when's payroll? Tomorrow, next week, whatever. Well, you're, you're I actually, I mean, I did my payroll yesterday. It'll come out next week. Yeah, so you'll be below that $100,000 yeah, mark. We'll be right at seventy-five. Now, could I get deposits? Maybe. Okay. I don't know. Thank so you. I'm not, I'm, I'm not panicked yet. We have plenty of supplies. We have, you know, our bills are always paid up. So if something gets paid late, I don't think anyone's coming after us. Um, it'll just be a lot of communication until we start getting that money in on a regular basis. If everything that you're hoping will occur, this is a stretch. Yeah. I know this is an estimation. Billing comes in over the next four to six months. You get what's currently being billed by this new company. Money starts streaming in. Do you anticipate being like at the end of the year in the black and the red? We'll be in the black. You'll be in we'll the black. We'll be in the black with, the, with that intermediate ALS. I was ready to... to do it. I mean, I had everything in place. I'm just not comfortable. It's, it's not going to change the dial that much on payroll, but it's enough. It doesn't make sense to do it right now. But we'll have advanced trucks. Yeah. And that'll bring in more money, you said. So it's really hard to project a year from now, isn't it? Because yeah. you have too many unknowns. Yeah. Um, well, Bobby's going to find out from the mayor if this 300 yeah, I don't have anything to do with I that. know, but you two work together. <laughs> We've got the 300000 that we're trying to free up the general fund for all the other many needs that we have. And yeah. if some of that could go towards paying that, freeing up 300000 in the general fund for other needs, many needs that the county has, plus what you need to keep viable, sustainable, with a, a balance, instead of wondering next month, are you gonna be able to make payroll, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, That's nice. what we're shooting for, I think. Hasn't been a fun time the last few weeks. No. I haven't, I don't think since we got it over 100,000 went below it, so.
Yes, kudos. I, I know you work hard. I know, I know the eclipse. Everybody was on standby, and I, I think that uh, it shows what happens when everybody works together. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm really happy that you know between hospital, EMS, health department, l law enforcement. There's, uh, if Tim Welch were here, I'd say kudos to Tim because yeah, he coordinated a. You know, we were anticipating 30,000. Obviously, we didn't have that, but like Betsy said earlier, it's better to be over-prepared than wish you'd prepared and not be prepared at all. Absolutely. And that's, that's when bad things happen. So, and I know you were part of that. Uh, 911, it takes a village. But before we do it lit, we really need to kind of know a little bit more, I think, because we're looking seriously at an EMS lit. Uh, because of basically, again, the state. It's a statewide phenomenon, what you're dealing with. You may be dealing with more because of situations, but I think the entire state's dealing with uh, EMS issues. The country. Um, and you've handled it probably as well as any county, um, so thank you for doing that. But before we pass any, any EMS lit, which I, we're considering, we need to know things like Newcastle, is that number going to continue? Um, and maybe we need to just press pause. But if it's something's going to happen by 2025, we have deadlines that we have to make some decisions by this summer or otherwise we'd have to wait a year. And none of us are thrilled about passing more taxes. My property tax went up 13%. I have a, year, so. a question. Something that would help me make that choice about the EMS lid is just to see information about all of your like fleet equipment in a projected schedule of when it would need to be retired or replaced. So I don't know how much. We're sitting in good shape right now. The oldest truck we have, will we need to start getting it in line for a remount because it's got a great box on it. It's just an old truck. It's a 2009. Everything else we have is a 20, 21, 22, and 23. So we applied for a lot of grants and different things to make that happen. So. We're, we're pretty good right there for now because we also paid for, finished paying for the Southwest ambulances, so. So when we're looking those. at an EMS lit right now, we don't need to project equipment replacement? Not for, not for me. I don't know about you guys. Not for 2025, but when? That's kind of the question. Um, if we're, because we, if we pass a lit, it hits well, every year, right? A, I can get a truck scheduled for a remount now and and when would quote, you have to pay for but it? But it would be at least two years before that truck's coming in. And what's the average cost of the remount? I know for you the remount that. for this is probably about 150000 It's okay. less than building a new one. Okay, thank you. Yep. And the commissioner's meeting, you were something about you have a Mercedes unit that you're trying to Three. sell? or Three, but now I'm not even sure if we can even have the money if we do go that route, so... I don't, there's some speculation there, so. Okay, what? Yes, thank you. Which basically when I read that, I, my thought was, okay, all the dollars are going back to the general fund because we really don't know. But that doesn't mean we can't reallocate those out of the general fund. Right, so we, we will have to consider that when, when that time comes and I, I know we just auctioned some vehicles and we've had, I think, three requests for the money from the auction, but have all the auction funds gone back to the general fund? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is, is that because it's easier or it's yeah. historical or just the best way, best practice or? So like what you're talking about, the Mercedes, obviously were purchased before you came on. So mm -hmm. it kind of depends on the records that were kept. And I, yeah, I imagine stuff. that I could, like I found all the other stuff I found for Henry County EMS, I went through all the past commissioners meeting and found where they approved them and where they paid them from. Okay. So. To get those dollars back, you're going to have to formally request an additional appropriation right. of those funds. So yeah. we, we can't act. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's not impossible. It's just some, yeah. some steps. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Anything else for <laughs> Mandy? Work. Yeah. We just want to do the right thing for right. taxpayers and you because it's a service like 911. We had to do something with 911 or it would have been defunct. Mm -hmm. He'd be laying off, Brian would be laying off people right and left. And I assume mm -hmm. things are looking up monetarily because we passed a 0.1% PSAP. Not that we wanted to, we had to, or we wouldn't have a 911 in a year or two. Okay. So we're looking at the same thing on EMS, but I know the states, I said, I listened to the hearing at the Senate and it's not pleasant what's going on statewide with EMS. So they're, they're aware, it's just, what are they going to do? Why they the do? The state's answer sounds like was to create an EMS lit tax. That was their answer. Yeah, so usually after all of the surveys and all the things that we put all the information into, yeah. that was the it, answer. It falls on the counties to yeah. pass a tax. Yep. As again, they said on six billion dollars surplus, but we got a two hundred dollar refund from them right before election. <laughs> but I digress. As Cole okay, said. so um, what about you had talked about us potentially picking up some wage expense for you, and then we also talked about the potential equipment expense. I guess what would be really helpful for me is over the next three years. Um, what do you see needs from additional income? I mean, we said we know we need to contribute whatever the negotiated rate. I don't. It is, wouldn't but. require for me to have near as much as say like Brian and his department and the kind of support that he would need. Because I mean, we're surviving now at BLS without help. I mean, we were maintaining really well actually. Um, it's mainly the moving up. That's a much greater expense, and you don't get those kind of revenues back in. I don't even know if I need it forever, honestly. But I got we got to have some kind of support. I don't look for things to get cheaper. So uh, it's only going to get worse. Fuel's going to get more expensive. Supplies are already almost doubled. Half the medications we can't get, they're on allocation. So, I mean, it's, it's only going to get worse, I think. And the return has not gone up. I don't think deflation's any longer in the dictionary. No. In fact, I just saw on a Medi-Count, I was pulling to see if they'd deposited any more, and we had sent a bill in for $832, and we got $1.32. <laughs> we do appreciate the work that is done in your department. You and Lucas, uh, Brian, and Brian, and <laughs> everybody pulling together, and sometimes uh, challenging times, especially mm -hmm. fiscally. It's, it's a challenging time. Um, so we've got a lot of talks coming up in May and June and July before our budget hearings about budget. Um, we, we gave a sizable um, raise, you know, longevity was sizable. Um, matrix was size, sizable. Uh, so we're going to have to, we're very anxious to listen to uh, Jason Simler coming up in a month and seeing where that trending is going as a result of that. Um, Ken, and I wanted to make sure you knew that Angela wanted to speak also. I just have a point of information. Uh, yes, please. So today at the IDOH meeting, <clears throat> someone from Medicare and FSSA was there, and so they're getting ready to print their Medicare workbook. So every year, it, it, everybody takes their cue from what Medicare reimbursement is, and that is going up. It typically does every year a little bit, but with the economy and the pricing of everything, the hospitals are really hurting. So I don't know if some one of you would be able to reach out to the Indiana Hospital mm -hmm. Association, and they might be able to give you an idea if we're going to be able to increase um, reimbursement from Medicare and then Medicaid will follow and so forth and so on. Um, might give it, help give us a better idea anyway. Mm -hmm. That uh, Senate hearing on EMS, uh, major thrust was those Medicare reimbursement. Mm -hmm. Everyone who spoke from around the state mentioned Medicare, Medicaid reimbursement as a major issue. Right. But, well, no. they set the precedent. So they, whatever they, they said, no one do. else is gonna gonna send more than they do. And you look at our county being well over six, about 60, 65 percent of our population yeah. are 65 and older. So we know we have a high Medicare population, and the majority of the runs that she's gonna do 
come from our nursing homes back and forth to the hospital and um, about so 80 percent yeah mm -hmm. so hopefully it'll help some but you, you brought up the hospital one of the workstations you mentioned you're trying to negotiate something with the hospital they went outside is that correct they're not doing anything they didn't contract with anyone it's take a transport as they can get it they are definitely calling more now again because I knew that newness would wear off those outside people ain't really wanting to come here and get a dollar and 32 cents so they are doing a couple of things they're billing the, con the customer or the patient we've gotten several phone calls that they are getting bills and then unfortunately it's not us so I can't I can't help them and there's no things got to be really dire uh, there's no talk or option of, of billing I've had plenty citizens of I'm not against it I'm not against setting a cap where we don't we're not asking you to pay 100% but can you supplement a little bit you got Brian's attention but yeah I don't think we said we would do it together because we don't want one service being the bad guy right. in the county, absolutely so we that, would do it together yeah, competition again yeah so we at the new Kathleen mess I got the wrong shirt I'm wearing two hats so please forgive me um, we just passed Joel six weeks ago uh, we amended our billing ordinance not to balance bill any city or county residents however those folks that are passing through we are balance billing and sending to collections for the full amount due is that a large amount of money it's not but every penny helps you know Marion County citizens don't pay tax in Henry County they get in a car crash and we have to take them to the hospital they need to pay for the service right. that the citizens of Henry County pay right. for. seems reasonable so uh, we did amend our billing ordinance to do that um, Henry County. Now, these no, outside County. these outside agencies that are coming to do these hospital transports that you're talking to Mandy about their billing practices are different that's why they make money that's why they come from Union City Ohio to Newcastle Indiana to take a patient to Indianapolis Indiana so they're making good bucks they're balance billing their patients yeah. so and then send them collections when they can't pay so so it right. sounds like things would have to be really dire for your two agencies to consider billing citizens like survival right right I mean that it's it's a double-edged sword because you know they pay taxes and, and stuff so well that's we, kind of their copay as the billing ordinance is written mm -hmm. um, you know if we're gonna balance bill them two thousand or twenty five hundred dollars okay you know. it's understandable but if we pass an EMS has tax it's taxing our citizens right to they're, keep they're, keep they're things afloat it. so but it's it's Somehow. minuscule probably billing the actual patient that needs a service is billing them for an actual service us passing an EMS is affecting every taxpayer in this who 99 percent will never be in one of your ambulances probably correct. but they're paying for the EMS tax correct so that's why I'm asking this yes every time I've been an ambulance outside of Henry County I, I've gotten a bill <laughs> and I've been in many ambulances in my life but this is the only place and I'm thankful that when I've been transported which I think it's been three times I've never gotten a bill which is nice but when I get a bill I kind of think that's legit usually the standard practice is to bill the patient we are outside of the norm in our billing practices and that that comes from our billing service too you know yeah so. I, I, I see both sides but I think most citizens if it's a life or death ambulance ride I'm not gonna qualm have too many great qualms about that service if they had to pay a hundred or two hundred dollars or whatever because sure. it's life-saving so as it is an EMS they're probably gonna have to pay I don't know fifty dollars a year but that's everybody right other questions unrelated how Monday go how to treat you any spikes and do what? runs Monday with the eclipse how was it good yeah. from the city standpoint our average call volume was below average all weekend and Monday fantastic so good, good planning we, good, good we didn't have the injuries that were possible yeah, we were 
we were busy. We definitely were transporting you were, people out of this hospital you were to busy. other hospitals, but mm. just our regular truck that was, and then we kept Nikestown busy. We had a truck down there, so. Okay. Yeah. We do appreciate you coming because we, we want the best information before we possibly look into a tax. Okay. Um, anybody else? Public, anybody? Brian, Josh, Angela, Bobby, Chad's here because, because he's here. <laughs> he's running and he's interested and appreciate that. Um, some information, I'm not gonna read them all, but uh, I shared at the work session some of the legislative updates that came from the uh, Willie and Red's AIC meeting. We know about the jail lit. There's a possibility councils can exempt mobile homes. I talked to Jody and it's not a big area for us. We don't have a huge amount of mobile home courts unlike uh, Wayne County that would affect them greatly. Um, unless I hear from her, I don't know that we'll have to act. The uh, House Bill 1328 has numerous things that affect councils and I'm not gonna read all those, but if you might wanna read the final past act that has to do with DLGF. Uh, comprehensive mental health centers, they now have to report. They've gotten some criticisms around the state and the legislatures have heard this. Ours is Meridian based out of uh, Muncie, but they have to now under House Bill 1205 give an annual report to commissioners and to councils. Uh, so we'll see when that might come about. They were talking about extending the 4% uh, maximum uh, levy gross qu uh, growth quotient to 2026. That did not pass. So uh, perhaps that'll uh, ride into actual market values on assessed valuations. Uh, Public safety lit fire departments. They had a proposal and a legislation for it to come totally out of the county portion. You know, we're a Coet County, and I think last time I checked, we're 47 percent of the tax council. Uh, the county non-incorporated uh, towns in Newcastle. Uh, the rural area is 47 percent. So, anything we do on lits, we have to have at least Newcastle and or. Knightstown and Middletown to agree with us to pass the lid. Um, I heard today in the community or in the commissioners meeting we did just get 1.5 million in community crossings, which is the maximum. The maximum had been a million dollars, so that will maybe help us attend to 20 miles of roads instead of 12 or 13 of our 777 miles of county roads, but any addition is, is, is a plus. Uh, other towns that got community crossings in Henry County, Knightstown got 645,000 in community crossings, Middletown 110,000, Mount Summit 190,000. So almost 2.5 million coming to the county plus those three towns. Uh, Corey said tomorrow we should find out what uh, amount the East Central Indiana Regional, uh, whatever we are, uh, planning. It's uh, Trevor out of Marion. Uh, we should find out how much we got. Last time East Central Indiana only got 15 million, one, one of the smallest in the uh, state. Uh, rumor has it that we really would like to have 50 million. Last time we got 1.5 million out of the 15 or 10 percent. That's roughly based on the population because Wayne County, obviously with Richmond, Delaware County with Muncie, Grant County with Marion, uh, they got the yeoman's uh, piece of the pie, pieces of the pie. So if we were to get 15 million, 50 million, hopefully we'd get 5 million. That's all conjecture and optimistic. We'll know tomorrow. Uh, work session coming up on the 25th, primarily jail pod. Uh, plan on that being two hours uh, on the 25th because that might be when uh, Jason's ready to give us a five-year update, which will help Angela and us heading into uh, uh, budget hearings. 
uh, EIRPC, I think uh, Bobby left, but Bobby and I are uh, serve on that. That's gonna be in Connersville on the 25th, same day as our work session. Uh, Hagar's Hope, that's a women's transitional center that's uh, similar to the guest house for men. We've been working hard on the building across the street that was the Bennett House, and we're, we're shooting for a May 1st open. And uh, we've been working in that uh, building quite a bit, and we'll be this weekend as well. Our Kiwanis annual pancake is on May 4th. I've got tickets if you're interested that put shoes on kids that really, really need uh, shoes. Uh, May 8th is our next council meeting. We'll talk more about lits then. I think we've pretty much uh, omitted the, the judicial lit in consideration given that they narrowed the uses of that. But the public uh, safety lit we need to talk about. We know that uh, fire departments and uh, law enforcement and emergency services have large needs. Um, we hey, need Kenan, I thought you said you were gonna read it all. Um, <laughs> the only thing I added that's not on your handout is uh, you saw the email from uh, Addie Roker. Roker. Um, don't expect her job classification and compensation updates until mid-July, so we will not have those estimates. I asked about the uh, spreadsheet that she usually gave to us by the end of June. Uh, she said that uh, what they're working on now uh, will replace uh, that spreadsheet that we had on market values. So it's gonna be a new new game in town. So uh, read the rest. Uh, anything else from the public? I can count on you, Kyle. <laughs> you and Dale Cole, we can count on you. Do you have a motion to adjourn? Yes. No. No, we usually do that in May at the earliest. So you might be looking at your calendars. Yeah, we, no, that's May at the earliest. Probably. Debbie, can you let us know if there are times in that late July, early August that are not good for you? We can maybe try to yes. schedule around. Them. Usually the in earliest we've ever gone are two days in late July. And I, I think one year we accomplished that, but usually it's the first two weeks in August. But that, those three weeks, if you would, that would be appreciated. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Thank you for the work you do. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Actually, Robert Trill says that's all that's needed. <laughs> <laughs>